My name is Kevin Bowmiller, and I'm the veterans agent in town. And uh, thank you to Mother Nature for kind of holding off, uh, better than what it could have been. Can everyone hear me? OK. So thank you very much for being here today to honor, remember, and thank those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice. Once again, writing shows that they have not forgotten. At this time, I ask you to stand, if you are able, for the invocation by U.S. Navy veteran Father Patrick Armano, chaplain at Austin Prep in St. Athanasius Parish. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you on this Memorial Day to call to mind all those who have died in the service of our nation. Look with mercy on our brothers and sisters, on their bravery and selflessness, on their generosity in giving themselves completely to the task at hand and offering their lives to protect us all. Bless all who have given their lives for the sake of liberty and grant them eternal rest. 
We remember in a particular way William Hansen and the sacrifices that he made. We remember also our brave men and women now serving in our armed forces, particularly our loved ones and those from our town of Reading who serve both home and abroad. Lord, send out your blessings to protect them all. Help them discharge their duties honorably and well. Bring them home safely to their families, their community, and all their loved ones. O Lord, bring your peace and mercy to our world banish violence from our midst, and wipe away our tears. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Father Armano. The Reading Police Department and the United States Naval Sea Cadets Constitution Division from Haverhill, Mass. will now present the colors. And please remain standing for the national anthem, which will be performed by the Reading Memorial High School Band. You may please be seated. For the past two years, I have had the opportunity and privilege to meet and spend time with many wonderful veterans in the town of Reading. Today, some of these brave men and women are no longer with us. I am grateful that I had the chance to sit and listen to them as they so humbly shared their experiences and sacrifices. If you have never walked through our four cemeteries, I encourage you to do so. Look on the ground for the military markers from the Revolutionary War, the Civil War, World War I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, and our current conflict. Soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, Coast Guard, men and women, pilots, gunners, engine men, merchant Marines, medics, just imagine the sacrifices made by these individuals and their families. Then imagine how different our lives might be if they did not precede us. They gave that last measure of devotion so that we could have the rights and freedoms that we enjoy today. We must always, not just today, but every day, honor them, remember them, and be thankful. 30 years ago, Reading lost one of our own. 1983, Reading Memorial High School graduate, 22-year-old fire controlman, third class, William Hansen, was killed May 17, 1987, aboard the USS Stark while on patrol in the Persian Gulf. The Stark was hit by two missiles fired from an Iraqi jet. 36 of William's shipmates died with him that day. Thank you to William's parents, Bill and Judy Hansen, along with William's brother, Bob, and his wife, Amy, who have traveled from Florida 
in Virginia to be with us today. Let us honor and remember William and his family, along with all Gold Star families that have paid the ultimate sacrifice. In an effort to help remember William, this bronze plaque in front of me will be placed in the hallway at Reading Memorial High School. It reads, in memory of William R. Hansen, class of 1983, fire controlman, third class petty officer, United States Navy, gave his life for freedom's cause. USS Stark, FFG 31, May 17, 1987. William and the men of the USS Stark performed their duty to protect us. Now it is our time to perform our duty to never forget them. In 1968, retired Union General John Logan organized the first National Decoration Day to honor the fallen after the Civil War. This has become our Memorial Day. I'd now like to invite Lauren Siegel from Reading Memorial High School to read General Logan's Memorial Day General Orders. The 30th day of May, 1868, is designated for the purpose of strewing with flowers or otherwise decorating the graves of comrades who died in defense of their country during the late rebellion, and whose bodies now lie in almost every city, village, and hamlet churchyard in the land. In this observance, no form of ceremony is prescribed, but posts and comrades will in their own way arrange such fitting services and testimonials of respect as circumstances may permit. We are organized comrades, as our regulation tells us, for the purpose, among other things, of preserving and strengthening those kind and fraternal feelings which have bound together the soldiers, sailors, and Marines who united to suppress the late rebellion. What can aid more to assure this result than cherishing tenderly the memory of our heroic dead, who made their breasts a barricade between our country and its foes? Their soldier lives were the reveille of freedom to the race in chains, and their deaths at the tattoo of rebellious tyranny in arms. We should guard their graves with sacred vigilance. All that the consecrated wealth and taste of the nation can add to their adornment and security is but a fitting tribute to the memory of their slain defenders. Let no wanton foot tread rudely on such hallowed grounds. Let pleasant paths invite the coming and going of reverent visitors and found mourners. Let no vandalism of avarice or neglect, no ravages of time testify to the present or the coming generation that we have forgotten as a people the cost of a free and undivided republic. If other eyes grow dull, other hands slack, and other hearts cold in the solemn trust, ours shall keep it well as long as the light and warmth of life remain to us. Let us then at the time appointed gather around their sacred remains and garland the, passion, the passionless mounds above them with the choicest flowers of springtime. Let us raise above them the dear old flag they have saved from his honor. Let us in this solemn presence renew our pledges to aid and assist those whom they have left among us a sacred charge upon a nation's gratitude, the soldiers and sh sailors, widow and orphan. It is the purpose of the commander in chief to inaugurate this observance with the hope that it will be kept up from year to year while a survivor of the war remains to honor the memory of his departed comrades. He earnestly desires the public press to lend its friendly aid in bringing the notice of comrades in all parts of the country in time for simultaneous compliance therewith. Thank you, Lauren. The high school band will now perform America the Beautiful.
Thank you very much. I'd now like to introdu introduce Mr. John Arena, Chairman of the Reading Board of Selectmen. Thank you, Kevin. Good morning and welcome to veterans here today and their family members, especially to Mr. and Mrs. Hansen, Bob and Amy Hansen, Mr. Dutter, Ms. Mayberry, the Reading Police and Honor Guard, members of the United States Naval Sea Cadet Corps, Mr. Fennelly, Ms. Siegel, Ms. Bacci, the RMH band members, assembled guests, friends, and fellow Reading citizens. We gather here today, as we do every year, to honor our military heroes, their families, and to remember their shared commitment, their courage, and their sacrifices. We are now in the presence of patriots who freely served in the defense of their country and in the furtherance of democracy and freedom around the globe. This morning, across our nation, millions of families with children will gather like us, line up to see their own town parade and ceremonies. They'll come and stand in rain, in shine, and in heat, all in quiet respect. The young kids will fidget or fuss. The older kids will perhaps wait in lawn chairs or stand politely, waiting to catch a glimpse of the start of the parade. Perhaps later in the afternoon or evening, there'll be a family get-together or a cookout. Maybe not in Reading, but somewhere, I'm sure. And that is really how today should be, a day in quiet reflection of the sacrifices of the veteran and their families. Today is a day to be with our families and to help remember those heroes who have gone before us to help make this day and all those which follow possible. Since the first shots of the Revolutionary War, American men and women have been answering this nation's call to duty to protect and defend without hesitation. We pray that there will come a day when our heroes will no longer be needed. And at the same instant, we know that in the years ahead, new heroes will stand willingly and take up arms in defense of our nation and people. The veterans we honor began their lives from many different corners in all walks of life from poverty, from wealth, from big city streets and the dusty roads of small towns, from big families and single parents, from high school and college, as volunteers and conscripted soldiers, as adolescents and adults, and from immigrant stock and from native-born sons and daughters. Despite these differences, these men and women share the common attributes of selflessness and dedication. Several years ago, while working in Hawaii, I had the opportunity to visit the National Memorial, Memorial Cemetery of the Pacific. It's built on a now extinct volcano well above the city heights, which makes it a perfect setting. I spent the day walking the site, reading the markers, and reflecting on the names and conflicts and battles I'd read in high school and in history books, Pearl Harbor, the Battle of Midway, Iwo Jima, Porkchop Hill. Blue flags flew at the graves of Medal of Honor recipients. I read each hero's story and the details of their commendation as I walked. Walking among those 34,000 war dead made it clear to me the real cost of freedom paid by these shoulders. These men and women were ordinary people who stood and served in extraordinary ways to serve others they did not even know. They chose to serve to protect this nation which has given them and us so much. Today is a somber day, a reflective day, and at the same time a thankful day. In both scripture and in military service, there is shared recognition of the willingness to give up one's life for another as a sign of greater love for others. Thinking of these honored men and women who are assembled with us today and those who lie in eternal rest um, around us, I am awed by this willingness. 
What do we say to thank those for this willingness? Happy Memorial Day doesn't seem to fit, does it? Perhaps it should be thank you for your service, or I'm sorry for your loss, or perhaps just a simple thank you. To service members, service member veterans standing here today, I thank you for your answering the call to duty. You have made our armed services the most respected in the world, and a special thank you to your families for your shared sacrifice. For those who gave their lives in the defense of this country, we owe an eternal debt, and we can begin to pay that debt back by not forgetting what they did and what they stood for. There will always be threats to our well-being, to the peaceful community of nations to which we belong, and new heroes will be asked to address terrorism, madman bent on acquiring weapons of mass destruction, and radical ideologies, such as that evil which recently targeted British children, leaving grieving families to pick up pieces of shattered lives. If we care about peace and safety of our nation, we must be willing to fight any challenge to this peace. Thank you for coming today, and may God bless you and your families our troops, and our great nation. Thank you, John. Now, Jill Mayberry, United States Air Force, will read our Roll Call of Honor. These are the veterans that have passed away since last Memorial Day. John DeAngelis, Robert Dingian, Robert Dolber, Doris Donard, John Fallon, Lawrence Grant, Thomas Hebbington, Joseph Hughes, Arthur Lorillard, Frederick Livingstone, Edward Marshall, James Moynihan, John Murphy, John Patano, John Rienzo, Philip Joyce, excuse me, Philip Royce, Stephen Scollin, David Sprague. May they rest in peace. Thank you, Jill. Now, Thomas Fennelly and Josh Gray, VFW Post, 685 Commander and Vice Commander, will now place an honor, a wreath, in honor of all our fallen brothers and sisters. At this time, I would like to introduce Sergeant Nicholas Dutter. Nick grew up in a military household as his father served for 21 years as a combat engineer. After graduating high school in 2000, Nick joined the Army as an armor crewman. He reported to Fort Hood, Texas in late 2000. Or in, eight, late, in late 2000, he attained the position of gunner and was promoted to sergeant in 2003. He and his tank crew were selected by the 4th Infantry Division Commander to pilot a new program called Battle Command on the Move. The group spearheaded the invasion of Iraq in 2003 by providing advanced ground support and intelligence for division leadership. His service includes operations in Crete, Kirkuk, and Samara, Iraq. After his service in returning home in 2005, he completed his bachelor's degree in economics from Worcester State and his master's degree in finance from Suffolk University. Nick currently resides with his wife and young son in Reading 
and he's a research, al anal research analyst in global asset management. He remains extremely active in veterans advocacy across the Boston area. Sergeant Dutter, welcome and thank you for being with us today. Good morning. I find my bio a mouthful as well. Um, I'm truly honored to be here with you all this morning. Uh, I've had the opportunity to speak on behalf of veterans, but it's a truly an honor to speak on behalf of the fallen, the men and white women that paid their life for freedom. I am a veteran. I came merely inches away from being remembered on Memorial Day rather than Veterans Day. I've carried the caskets of my friends. I've watched mentors laid lifeless. I've had others take their own lives upon returning home. I've lost family in World War I. I prayed for my father during the Gulf War. I've watched my mother pray for me when I deployed. And I currently watch my mother-in-law pray for my brother-in-law, who's currently deployed in Afghanistan. Today is Memorial Day, the day Americans pause and remember those that died in foreign lands for to, pro to protect our, fam our freedom, our family, Sometimes they do not know why they go. Sometimes they don't agree, but they pack their bags, they kiss their families goodbye, and they leave. I was asked to remind the audience today about who these men and women are. And in the state of Massachusetts, 2,300 men and women never came home. In Vietnam, the average age of that person was 22 years old. In World War I, it was 25 years old. World War II, those men and women were 26 years old. And since 2001, nearly half of the men and women are under the age of 25. When you look around and you see the veterans, you think old, but we're really young. The men and women that don't come home, that don't grow old, are buried at such a young age. Just like William Hansen, on May 17th in 1987, he packed his bags and left after high school. He didn't know there was gonna be a war. It was the Cold War, it was 1987. He wasn't in combat, he wasn't in harmful waters. He was escorting and protecting oil tankers to keep the peace in the Strait of Hamas. The USS Stark was attacked by the Iraqi jet, fired two missiles, 37 crew members were killed. It took the entire rest of the crew to save the ship, not to save equipment, but to save the rest of the crew's lives. When you read about the anniversary of this event, they all ask why it wasn't them that day. I'd like to take a moment and recognize the Hansons that came up from Florida today. Now let's see if I can jumble this one through. I brought some pennies today, and I'll leave them somewhere. If you ever walk through a cemetery, and this kind of started out in the Roman Empire, where coins were left on the bodies of the fallen or something to pay tolls or pay their respects, and at, following the Vietnam conflict, men and women left pennies on graves to pay respect, respects for the fallen. They played a nickel on, the, on a gravestone if they served in basic training. They left a dime if they, let me explain. Let me trouble. A nickel if they served in basic training. They left a dime if they served in combat with them and a quarter if they were there when they were fallen. So I ask you today, if you have change or grab one of these pennies where I happen to place them and place a stone where you see a flag because when family members come to these graves, they'll be honored to, to see that someone paid the respects of their fallen loved one. As I close today, I'd like to say, the men and women we remember today sacrificed their lives, their mothers, their fathers, their husbands, wives, their children, their family, just like Ms. Mr. and Mrs. Hansen. They sacrificed their lives and it's up to the, the families to share their legacy. Today is Memorial Day, but to these families, every day is Memorial Day. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Nick. I now welcome Parker Middle School student, Sarah Baki. Sarah is the Project 351 Ambassador, and she will present the Governor's Memorial Day Proclamation. The Commonwealth of Massachusetts, a proclamation. Whereas while the nation was still recovering from the horrors of the Civil War, people in cities and towns across the country gathered to honor those Union and Confederate soldiers who had given their lives celebrating the first Decoration Day. And whereas after World War I, the nation came together again to honor those who had fallen in the service of their country. Renamed Memorial Day, the last Monday in May, is when people remember and honor the memory of all the men and women who fought and died in all American wars and conflicts. And whereas throughout our country's history, thousands of Massachusetts citizens have fought wars and conflicts to defend our safety and way of life. And whereas their legacy of patriotism and dedication to country is an inspiration to all Americans. And whereas it is appropriate that all Massachusetts citizens remember the bravery of those who gave their lives so that their sacrifices serve as a reminder of the cost of our freedom. Now, therefore, I, Charles D. Baker, Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, do hereby proclaim May 29, 2017 to be Memorial Day. Thank you very much, Sarah. Well done. At this time, I have a presentation from the state to William Hansen's parents, Bill and Judy. To all those who shall see these presents, greeting. This is to certify that the governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts authorized by Chapter 132 of the Acts of 2009 has presented the Medal of Liberty for FC3 William R. Hansen, United States Navy. Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 33, Section 67. This shall be a Medal of Liberty which shall be awarded to the next of kin of servicemen and women from the Commonwealth killed in action, or who died in service while in a designated combat area in the line of duty. Signed, Charles D. Baker, Governor, and Gary W. Keith, Major General, Massachusetts National Guard. Bob Hansen, William's brother, who currently works for the Navy and is joining us from Virginia today, would like to share a few words. Thank you, Kevin. Can everybody hear me? Excellent. So, uh, yeah, I work for the Navy currently, and uh, I certainly live in an area that's known as a military town, very close to Norfolk, Virginia. And I can tell you, they would be impressed by the turnout here today. So thank you very much. Um, so I'd like to share with you today um, the favorite part, uh, my favorite part of the speech that Ronald Reagan gave shortly after the attack on Stark. On the 22nd of May, all the family members gathered down at Naval Station Mayport in Florida. Uh, hot day, uh, you know, not like today at all, uh, in a hangar, uh, and listened to the speech, and we got to meet the Reagans, and uh, it was an outstanding service that we shared with the entire country. But it just... Uh, I'd like to share my favorite portion of that speech. The men of the USS Stark stood guard in the night. One of our ambassadors paid them this tribute. They were tough. They were brave. They were great. Well, they were great, and those that died did embody the best of us. 
Yes, they were ordinary men who did extraordinary things. Yes, they were heroes. And because they were heroes, let us not forget this, that for all the lovely spring and summer days, we will never share with them again. For every Thanksgiving and Christmas that will seem empty without them, there will be other moments too. Moments when we see the light of discovery in young eyes, eyes that for the first time see the world around them and know the sweep of history and wonder. Why is there such a place as America? And how is that such precious gift mine? And we can answer them. We can answer them by telling them of this day and those that we come to honor here. And it is then we'll see understanding in those young eyes. It is then they will know the same gratitude and pride that we share today. The gratitude and pride Americans feel always for those who suffer and die so that precious gift of America might always be ours. I'd like to thank the town of Reading, the Reading High School Band, the Board of Selectmen, and Kevin Bowmiller for putting this on today and helping to honor and remember my brother on this 30th anniversary of the attack on the start. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bob. The Reading Memorial High School Band will now perform the Battle Hymn of the Republic, followed by Taps. That concludes our services here today. Thank you for all for attending. And thank you to everyone who has participated in today's services. I'd like to thank the... I'd like to thank the amazing cemetery ground crew who spent the past week in the rain, preparing all the cemeteries for today, as they do all year round. I'd personally like to thank and congratulate Bob Keating, cemetery director for the past 27 years, who is retiring in just a few short days. All the best to you, Bob. You'll be missed.
I'd like to thank Frank Driscoll, the soldier and sailor's graves officer, and his small army of volunteers for carrying out G General Logan's orders and decorating over 2,200 graves in town. Well done. To the Boy Scouts, Boy Scout Troop 702, Veterans Day and Memorial Day would not happen without you guys. Thank you very much, and bravo Zulu. Thank you to the Reading Selectmen, Town Manager, and all, all who support veterans throughout the year. May God bless all those that have gone before us and all those currently serving to protect our freedom. Services will continue at Forest Glen Cemetery at 1045, Charles Lawn Cemetery at 1130, and Wood End Cemetery at 12 noon. Thank you very much and have a great day.